Question. A nurse is caring for a client who is meeting with the palliative care team. After the meeting, the client's family asks for clarification about palliative care. Which statements about palliative care are accurate? Select all that apply. 1. Palliative care focuses on quality of life and can be provided at any time. 2. Palliative care is only possible with a terminal diagnosis of less than 6 months. 3. Palliative care is provided by a multidisciplinary team. 4. Palliative care is another term for hospice care. 5. Palliative care provides relief from symptoms associated with chronic illnesses. Answer. Option 1, 3 and 5 are correct. Explanation. Palliative care is a model of treatment that involves managing symptoms, providing psychosocial support, coordinating care, and assisting with decision-making to relieve suffering and improve quality of life for clients and families facing serious illnesses. An interdisciplinary palliative assessment team often includes nursing staff, chaplains, social workers, therapists, and nutritionists who work together on a comprehensive treatment plan. This model of care has been found to decrease unnecessary medical interventions and reduce depressive symptoms. Families of clients who receive palliative care interventions also experience lower rates of prolonged grief and post-traumatic stress disorder. Option 2. Palliative care is not limited to the last five months of life and can begin immediately after diagnosis of terminal disease, eeg, advanced heart failure or cancer. Option 4. The main difference between palliative care and hospice is that clients receiving palliative care can receive concurrent curative treatment. Hospice care is only started once the client decides to forego curative treatment. Educational Objective Palliative care focuses on quality of life and symptom management, eeg, pain, dyspnea, fatigue, constipation, nausea, loss of appetite, difficulty sleeping, depression. It can be given concurrently with life-prolonging treatment in the setting of terminal disease. Palliative care is provided by a multidisciplinary care team with a focus on the clients and their families. Question. The nurse is assigned to care for a hospitalized, confused client with an indwelling urinary catheter. On entering the client's room, the nurse notes the client pulling at the catheter and grimacing in pain. Blood is trickling from the client's meatus and the urine in the drainage bag is pink. Which action should the nurse take first? 1. Collect a urine specimen and send to the lab. 2. Deflate the balloon on the urinary catheter. 3. Remove the catheter by gently pulling from the urethra. 4. Use a sterile 4x4 four four pad to absorb the blood around the meatus. Answer. Option 2 is correct. Explanation. Because signs of traumatic injury are present, the nurse should follow steps to remove the catheter before further complications, such as obstruction, occur. Steps for removing an indwelling catheter include the following. Perform hand hygiene. Ensure privacy and explain the procedure to the client. Apply clean gloves. Place a waterproof pad underneath the client. Remove any adhesive tape or device anchoring the catheter. Follow specific manufacturer instructions for balloon deflation. Loosen the syringe plunger and connect the empty syringe hub into the inflation port. Deflate the balloon by allowing water to flow back into the syringe naturally, removing all 10 milliliters, or applicable amount. Note the size of the balloon labeled on the balloon port. If water does not flow back naturally, use only gentle aspiration. Remove the catheter gently and slowly, inspect to make sure it is intact and fragments were not left in the client. If any resistance is met, stop the removal procedure and consult with the urologist for removal. Empty and measure urine before discarding the catheter and drainage bag in the biohazard bin or according to hospital policy. Remove gloves and perform hand hygiene. Option 1, a urine specimen can be collected after the balloon is deflated or after the catheter is removed if needed. Option 4, the meatus should be cleaned after balloon deflation. Educational Objective When the urinary catheter balloon occludes the urethra, it should be deflated immediately to prevent further injury or complication. After balloon deflation, gently and slowly remove the catheter. If there is resistance, notify the urologist. Question. During a home visit, 
the community health nurse observes bruises in various stages of healing on the extremities and torso of an elderly client. The client explains that the bruises are from bumping into furniture and the wall in the wheelchair. What is the priority nursing action? One dot ask the client to explain the bruises on the torso. Two, assess the client's general hygiene and nutritional status. Three dot report the bruises to the client's health care provider. Four, talk to the client's child about the injuries. Answer, option two is correct. Explanation. The client's injuries are inconsistent with the explanation given in that bumping into furniture could explain bruising on the extremities, but does not account for the bruises on the torso, trunk. In addition, the bruises are in various stages of healing, which suggests that the injuries occurred over multiple occasions. The nurse's findings are suggestive of elder abuse but not conclusive. Further assessment is needed too. Confirm the nurse's suspicions and to determine the extent of the abuse. The nurse will assess the client for general hygiene, clothing, nutritional and hydration status, presence of other injuries, inappropriate medication administration, signs of depression, and other statements by the client suggesting neglect. During the assessment and client interview, the nurse will need to maintain a neutral, non-judgmental attitude to facilitate a trusting nurse-client relationship. Option 1, asking the client to explain the bruises on the torso is a why type of question, places the client on the defensive and does not facilitate a trusting nurse-client relationship. Option 3, reporting the bruises to the HCP is an appropriate nursing action but is not the priority. The nurse needs additional information about the client's status and situation. Option 4, talking to the client's child and or other family members may be an appropriate nursing action. However, the nurse needs more information about the client's status to determine needed interventions. Further assessment for indications of elder abuse is the priority. Educational objective. When elder abuse is suspected, the nurse needs to perform further assessment to validate and confirm any initial findings and to determine the extent of the abuse and or neglect. Areas of assessment for elder abuse include the client's general hygiene, clothing, nutritional and hydration status, presence of other injuries, inappropriate medication administration, signs of depression, and other statements suggesting neglect. Question. The nurse is providing discharge instructions to a 70-year-old client newly diagnosed with heart failure, who has a low literacy level. What are some teaching strategies that the nurse can use for this client? Select all that apply. 1. Conduct teaching sessions while a family member is present. 2. Discourage the client from using the internet to look up health information. 3. Have client watch a DVD about heart failure management. 4. Print out pictures of a food label and review where to look for sodium content. 5. Speak slowly and loudly so the client can understand you. Answer. Option 1, 3 and 4 are correct. Explanation. The nurse needs to consider several factors when selecting teaching strategies. These include client characteristics, age, educational background, language skills, culture, subject matter, and available resources. Learning can be improved as follows. Using pictures and simplified text is beneficial to the older adult with low literacy. Including a family member in the teaching process will assist the client in reinforcement of the material at a later date. Professionally produced programs are beneficial as they contain high-quality visual content as well as a delivery of auditory content in layperson's language. Option 2. Older adults are using the Internet in increasing numbers as are clients with low literacy. Several organizations are developing and promoting user-friendly websites. Society in general relies heavily on web-based health information. It is important for the nurse to teach the client and possibly supply a list of reputable sites for the client to view. Option 5. Unless the client is hard of hearing, speaking slowly and loudly is unnecessary and demeaning. Educational objective. For a client with low literacy, the nurse should use multiple teaching strategies, including professionally produced educational programs, pictures with simplified text, and inclusion of a family member during teaching sessions. Question. The nurse prepares to care for a client being admitted with a confirmed diagnosis of Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. 
which personal protective equipment will the nurse use when providing care to the client? 1. Gloves and gown. 2. Gloves and mask. 3. Gown and N95 respirator. 4. Gown, gloves and 95 respirator and eye protection. Answer. Option 4 is correct. Explanation. Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, is a viral respiratory illness caused by the coronavirus, MERS-CoV. Symptoms include fever, cough, and shortness of breath that often worsen and cause death in many of those afflicted. The incubation period is 5 to 6 days, but can range from 2 to 14 days. How the virus spreads is not fully understood, but it is thought to spread via respiratory secretions. Because it has easily spread to those who care for infected persons, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends the use of standard, contact, and airborne precautions with eye protection when caring for clients with MERS. Options 1, 2, and 3, these options do not provide enough protection, as each is missing a vital element that is recommended when caring for a client with MERS. Educational Objective Standard, contact, and airborne precautions with eye protection should be used when caring for a client with suspected or diagnosed Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. Thank you for watching. Subscribe in Clex Avenue. And watch playlist for more videos.